Today on The Grave Talks, Haunted Antiques. Take a look around you. The vintage item movement is big business. And not just reproduction items either. Legitimate items, heirlooms, furniture, jewelry, clothing. You name it. If it once belonged to the living and is still in relatively usable shape, someone is going to try and sell it. This is the business of selling dead people's things. And if you look at it closely, you may discover some of those things are in fact haunted. Haunted antiques that have a life and sometimes personality of their own. How haunted are these items? That very much depends on what it is we're talking about and what the haunted antique was used for. When one owns a haunted antique, does the former owner come with it? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. According to author Dwayne Scott Kearney, who we talked to on this topic, it seems haunted antiques are more of a vehicle for repeated energy than they are for a conscious energy or soul. This means that a specific event or action may be repeated visually or audibly around the object in question. It seems to be very rare that great Aunt Edna will break free from her brooch collection to share insight on a better way to make her prized casserole recipe. You're much more likely to be plagued by the scent of the tuna casserole than you are by her uncharming personality. But are these antiques safe? It all depends how comfortable you are with unexplained activity occurring around you and your loved ones. When it comes to the paranormal, it seems anything is possible. The real question is, do you like ghosts? Are you okay with unexplained activity in your home? If you answered yes, then acquiring a collection of these objects may be right up your alley. If not, then you may want to stick with a reproduction variety of vintage decor. I would say I was, uh, like many people, quite a bit of a skeptic. (laughs) <laughs> um, uh, I really hadn't had any experiences in it, uh, didn't have much of an opinion. Um, though fairly early on when I got into, in, into the business, um, you know, this, I would say this is a business of endings. <laughs> the antique business is a business of endings. Um, it's always d- uh, divorce, downsizing, and death, the, the, the three Ds. <laughs> so... That, and the latter is always there. Um, so so over, over the years, um, even from the beginning, I was just exposed to, to a lot of that. But very early on, um, uh, a friend of mine who I went to, had gone to college with um, uh, called me and said that his, his father had passed. And I was very close to this uh, family or their Jewish family, and they were almost kind of like a second family to me. And I'm Catholic and know much about that. But his his dad was great. So his dad was his name was Myron, um, and uh, we were both Pisces, and that I do kind of believe in. <laughs> and he had he had a great sense of humor and a great spirit, um, but he he truly suffered Job like diabetes, and it was. You know, first he lost a leg, then he lost another leg, then he went blind. I mean, the guy was just, but he was a he was such a such a sweet soul. Anyway, his um, uh, son says, you know, we're going to have a shiva at the house, and we we'd like you to come. And he says, but there's like a bit of a twist. And I said, well, you know, whatever I can do, you know. And he goes, well, you know, we're going to be needing to downsize mom. She can't be in this big apartment anymore. Uh, it's just the finances of it. So while you're there, you know, just kind of like check out stuff. And initially I said, yeah, I'm not really comfortable doing that. It's like it's like a, basically I'm doing an appraisal at a Shiva. <laughs> that, that just didn't didn't set right. And he goes, you know, he does just, you know, just be subtle about it. You know, nobody nobody has to know. Just just check out this now. I kind of embraced it because I'd known them for so many years, and um, they were a very artistic family. They would go uh, to um, a lot of uh, like kind of outsider art fairs in the '60s and '70s, and they had a, they had a good eye. You know, they would they would buy really cool things. So in that, I was like going, well, huh, you yeah, know, this could be interesting. Um, anyway, um, I get there, and um, it, you know, it was a it, it was a, a, a sad occasion, but but it was he was a he was a really cool guy, and people were just telling all the stories 
about his life. And um, there was all this food. Oh, my gosh, the food. Um, you know, and, and again, being Catholic, uh, when somebody died, you know, usually you go to a restaurant and it was always about, you know, uh, how uh, how popular the uh, relative was depended on the quality of the restaurant. You know? uh, but <laughs> this this being in, in, in someone's home, I was you know, a little bit you know taken back. Anyway, this is going on, and uh, I'm just like slowly wandering around the, around the apartment, looking at things. Occasionally, I pick up a vase and look for a signature on the bottom, and I, I tried to be discreet about it. And while this is going on, all of a sudden, there's this scream, and it sounded like his mother, but I didn't know where his mother was, you know, at at the time. Um, and my friend went running off, going like, "I think that was mom," you know, and he goes running off into a bedroom. Um, and uh, I'm s- standing there with a plate of kugel in my hands, you know, <laughs> knowing what to do. And everybody goes you know, dead silent. Everybody's like freaking out. What is she screaming about? Well, she screams again. And then my friend comes, opens up the door and says, get in here, get in here. And I, I go into the bed, into the, into the bedroom. Now, the bedroom, everyone who had, was attending the Shiva had gone, of course, and put their, their coats and bags and hats on top of the bed. But when I walked in the room, and there were easily 50 people there. When I got there, all that stuff is all over the floor. Everything. The purses and jackets and contents of purses and coats. Everything's, it was as if like a wind came through and had blown it all off <laughs> the, the, the bed. Um, and she was standing there and she says, it's him. He's been doing this all day. Um which just, again, meant, like, nothing to me. And my friend said, oh, you know, my mother, she's so uh, overcome with grief. Yeah, she probably did this. And his mother was saying, says, no, no, you guys don't get it. You guys don't get it. Uh, he did this. Um, so we just start putting all this stuff back on the, on, on, onto the bed. Um, because we're really concerned about, you know, how, how, how would it look for these people who are mourners coming to somebody's house and then we're all rifling through their possessions. So immediately the, my, my own Catholic guilt is you know, jumping in. Um, uh, and put everything back in place. And then she goes and runs into the, uh, into the bathroom and she was crying. And uh, my friend said he was going to go back to the, uh, you know, into, the, in, into the living room. And while I'm standing there, the TV goes on. Just, just by itself. Just just goes on and it was just this static you know between between channels i didn't know what to make of that either <laughs> but that was that was odd um and his mother comes out of the bathroom and again starts with that with the he's been doing that all day as well she goes tv just goes on and off on and off on and off well uh i thought well i can fix this you know <laughs> i'm trying to be the the helpful goy here so i unplugged the tv but That'll take care of it, right? I go and use the bathroom. She goes back into the into the rest of the apartment. I come out, and that freaking TV is back on. the The cord is. <laughs> I can still see this. I can see the cord like laying on the carpeting, that pea green carpeting, not connected to the wall. No juice. Poltergeist worthy. Crap your pants. What the hell is this about? <laughs> so. That was my first experience, and I would say most vivid experience, of something completely inexplicable. Prior to getting into this industry and working with antiques and, and having some experiences, did you believe in ghosts? Did, did you did you think that this was was a thing, or was it just you know something explained away that that other people have happened to them, but it's 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 all in their minds? I believe that. Um, You'd hear, you'd hear so many of other people's stories, and depending who told you, who is somebody that I um, believed or trusted, uh, perhaps a teacher or a really good friend, I'd go like, well, you know, that, that's a possibility. But overall, if, if I didn't know somebody, I, 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 I wasn't buying it. Um, and do kind of have a... Uh, an update to this because uh, after after I wrote the book and there's a chapter in the book called Still Still Sitting Shiva, um, I contacted my friend and I said, you know, I, w- I want you to know I've written this and I certainly wouldn't publish it without your permission and I, I want you know, your feedback. And um, 
Uh, obviously, we still stay in, stay in touch, but we've never talked about this since. Uh, and this is a number of years ago. I mean, we were both in our 20s. Um, and he calls me up and he's crying. And I was like, oh, gosh, like, what did I what did I do? Did I, did I cross a line here? Um, and he said, wow, you really captured my parents. I can hear their voice in in your story. You, you brought me back to that. And I said, oh, that's yeah, I'm really I'm really touched by that. But, you know, what about the event itself, as you recall? And he said, no, that's that's how I remember it as well. And he says, but I really tried to not think about it over the years. Um, most of the what he told me was that during that that the three days there there was a lot of that i left that night i i was just, where's my coat you know <laughs> i'm gone <laughs> um uh and, and and afterwards it it was it was pretty done it pretty much done with that and then she did she did move out of move out of the apartment um i think it said a lot about him so um i don't think he was trying to scare us i think he was trying to get get our attention. He was a bit of a prankster. So I'd say, whereas I didn't believe it prior, given the fact who he was and how it happened, that made me a believer. So how did you get into the uh, antique business and how did you start collecting and, and, and becoming part of that world? Uh, okay. <laughs> so even when I, when I was a little kid, I used to, uh, I used to, uh, go around the neighborhood and I'd ask the, the neighbor kids or even kids I didn't know if they had toys that they didn't want to play with and that I, I would consign things for them. <laughs> and so I went around with a little wagon and uh, picked up all this stuff. So basically, you know, it was like a resale store for, for unwanted toys. And I set it up on my, on my uh, parents' front porch, which they did not appreciate. And uh, I talk about this in the, in, in, in the book as well, uh, you know, selling dead people's things. But is they had so I called it the porch store, right? But and kids would come by, and I basically we'd, I would just exchange things, or sometimes I made a little money. It was way better than you know mowing the lawn or delivering newspapers. Um, <laughs> but but people would drive by and see this sign that's at the porch store. You know, they would ask if I you know knew anybody who did aluminum siding or yeah. You know, could I recommend a good plumber? You know, it's just, so like wrong, wrong graphics. So my, my marketing skills weren't, weren't uh, very well honed. Uh, so uh, I did that, you know, as a kid in, 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 um, in, in high school, my dad worked for a division of um, uh, uh, Playboy, um, but in the production side of it. And, uh, and he would come home with, with, uh, proof uh, photographic prints of some of the models, which my mother was not happy about <laughs> ever. Uh, and he was so proud of like he did color uh, color correction. Um, he was a photo engraver, which is a bit of a lost art now, but uh, computers. Uh, but back then, you you needed to have somebody who knew how to do that, and it was it was a, it was truly an art. Um, well, so. Uh, the one, one day he brought home a whole bunch of, they, usually they just hit the garbage. My mother was just, you know, he had to throw these things out. Um, don't tell the neighbors. It was that. No one should know. We're, we're living off the soft core profits of smut, you know, and, it, and now it seems so tame and ridiculous, but you know, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the sixties. So, seventies. <laughs> uh, um, so one day he brings home this huge pile of, uh, of, of, of uh, models, these photographic proof sheets, um, and uh, of course the garbage. They're in the garbage the next night. Well, I dug them out. I dug them out, and I'm in high school at this point. And I thought, this is a. I've got a new. I've got an idea here. <laughs> so I started selling them uh, in, in, in out of my locker in high school. And I'm like a. I'm like a sophomore. I'm five feet, barely five feet tall, barely a hundred pounds. I'm the kid everybody beats up. One of them, right? But it was, it made me cool though. <laughs> and I never had never really thought about that. So like the bullies would be like, well, before we smack him, does he have any new photographs of naked girls? <laughs> uh, uh, again, chap chapter in the book. Um, so like, the, it's always been there. Always, you know, same thing in college. I had little side businesses. I mean, I go on and on about this, but, but that's how I got started. Tell me about the first time you had something happen with an object 
something from a dead person, essentially, that made you raise your eyebrows, that made you go, okay, I think there might be something going on here with this, more than just uh, a weird feeling. What was what was that object and what happened? Well, you know, there's, there's kind of a pattern here, which I... Antique dealers sometimes talk about, but I, I don't hear it, it, it spoken about much. And, um, you know, this can be either from a, uh, uh, you know, a high-end hoarder or a low-end hoarder because it's still hoarding. Um, and when there's a clean-out, um, and what's funny is, just kind of answer your question in, in parallel, an incident happened recently, I mean, in the last month, which freaked me out because it reminded me of the, an earlier thing that had happened. And we'll, so we'll, st we'll start with that. So I got into a hoarder house and I mean, this is a hoarder house. This is, you are standing on piles of trash to, to look around at things. You're like in a, practically in a hazmat suit, you know, you get little gloves and a, and a mask and a bag and you're going through it. It's, it's really kind of all and the smell is terrible. Uh, but, you know, you always want to go because you never know what you're going to find. And it's probably going to be cheap. And every once in a while, you find something really cool and or, or, or if nothing else, a story. Anyway, so working with the guy who's cleaning out this 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 house um, and they get this thing cleaned down to the to the floors. This is immaculate. It's it's amazing what people can do. <laughs> the whole crew comes in. So everything is taken. Yeah, remember, this is this like the place is just. I don't think gutted. I mean, the walls are still there, but all the garbage is out. Everything's swept and washed and clean, and there are no possessions left in the house. Because what happens then? Then it goes to the realtor. There's a system here for these things. You know, if the house is salvageable, you know, of course it's going to go to a realtor. So it was one of these. So I was there, and um, we were. I'd, I'd seen the house the first time with all the with all the stuff, in, and I didn't. I didn't. You know, get much of, uh, you know, out of it. And the guys doing the clean out. Had said, well, you know, you want to you, you want to come back with me and do the walkthrough. And I thought, well, this is going to be kind of boring because we're just going to be looking at empty rooms. Um, but it was a cool house, and I really love architecture. And it's kind of fun to see the before and the after in some of these things. You know, like, wow, the floor is amazing. The, <laughs> there's some the architectural details are suddenly there because you couldn't see them before. Um, so going through the house, and again, this is swept, broom cleaned. Nothing will be there flat out. And we get down this long hallway to this to this like third bedroom off to the side. And in the middle of the room on the floor is sitting a book. Now, both of us were like, how can that be? <laughs> um, and this is kind of again, I've talked to other people about this and it, this is this is a, a, a quote unquote thing that oftentimes some object just appears and you and it has some significance one might not understand what it, what what it is but it's a significant certainly to the uh spirit or ghost or entity or whatever that wants you to see that there's a reason for that thing to be there um in this instance it was a bible which i'm, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps telling you about it. <laughs> so that was that was the um, it was interesting too because again being there it, it, experiencing something with someone else I think really magnifies the experience you can kind of mistrust your own feelings did this happen did it not happen when you're there with somebody else it, it just it just validates it in a way like like you know like 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 nothing else it's a it's a it's a what the f you know <laughs> um the incident that just happened, and it was a uh, in a, a, a condo in a high rise, so kind of you think like an unlikely place, but these things can happen anywhere. Not a hoarder house, but a clean out, a clean out again, and a remodel. They put down floors and carpeting, da 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 da. And I did the walkthrough with 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 the realtor because I'd been there earlier, and uh, the the realtor reaches into a closet and he goes. What is this doing here? And it was a picture, this large, like eight and a half by eleven picture of the person who had lived there. Um, and he was like, I mean, the floors had even been replaced. So where, where, where is this thing? I'd gone through the whole place before, and then I'd seen everything leave, 
and I did done the walkthrough, so I knew it. That's what we're supposed to do, you know, help move all these things along. There's not anything, anything supposed to be left there. Um, but it was a picture of the deceased. And to me, that was, I'm still here. This is my place. <laughs> um, I'm leaving my mark on this. And uh, someone that I, I, I did know, and I kind of, again, I wasn't surprised with that. Uh, and, and again, this happened just a couple weeks ago. But it flashed me back to this incident of, of wow, probably 20 years earlier. Though in between, I've talked to other dealers, and they, they said, yeah, that's happened to me. Where it's just one thing, just one, one thing. Um, and it's often something, something small. And you could say, well, you know, they overlooked it or whatever. But, you know, we're not, we're not talking about upside down crucifixes or anything like that. You know, this, I, I think part of the reason my book resonates is because these are real. These are honest experiences. I don't have explanations for them. I can have, give you my impression of why. Um, but this is just, you know, this is just what happened to me. <laughs> um, but since now any number of people are coming forward going, oh, that, that. Like, that's a thing. <laughs> that's a thing. How common is discussion of haunted objects within the antique community? Because it's one of those things I've talked about on, on the shows over the years where you would think if you were to guess what place has a lot of ghosts in it, I always think an antique store. But it's very rare that we ever see or hear about haunted antique stores, at least publicly acknowledged or, or publicly spoken about uh, at the least is it isn't it an accepted thing is it just kind of a hush hush we all know this is going on uh, how how is that received and perceived in in the antique world it, 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 exactly um it's it's um <laughs> how do i put this yeah in the in in in, in the business um Everybody's got everybody's got a story. Everybody has has an experience. I think a lot of antique dealers tend to believe in this a lot more, just because they're so connected to these transition situations. Um, but you know, think about it on a retail end. Just a couple different answers here. On a retail end, eh, uh, you know, if you and we could talk about my store you know, you know, later. Um, uh, it's something retailers don't necessarily talk about because not all customers are cool with that um there are there i i, I recall one time a, a girl came in and she was gonna buy this sweater and she's holding it there and then she says well where did it come from and i had said well it was you know at an estate sale and she goes an estate sale you mean like this is this is a dead woman's sweater and i said well well yeah but we had it dry cleaned <laughs> and she she the girl she passed out cold right there when I said the words. So not everybody's cool about this. Now other people, yep, think it's think it's great, think it's fascinating, they think it's sexy, whatever. I mean it's you know it's interesting. I mean you're not gonna have that experience from something you bought at IKEA. You know, let's put it that way. Um, I doubt it anyway. So in the in the industry though, yeah, there's there's talk about it, but it's 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 and I'll probably get some blowback on this, but it's um it's it's not something we re anyone really like publicizes because it, it makes people uncomfortable and that doesn't and that doesn't close a sale having seen thousands of items come and go over the years are there any specific ones any specific type of item that you would say have a higher chance a higher percentage chance of having something attached to it than than another well well i'll, I'll well, I, I will I'll, i will call out yeah, you know, again, people pissed at me about this. Um, you know, eBay for a long time went through this whole thing with like haunted dolls and people getting huge money for haunted. Suddenly, every Barbie suddenly looks like she could, you know, yeah, she's back from the dead. Um, and and I'm not saying that there could absolutely be that. I don't know anyone who's had a haunted doll legitimately that I believed. Um, I think a lot of these things are, you know, it could be, I, wh my point is always, why isn't it a haunted toaster? You know, um, yeah, I really need to move this thing. Let me tell you, this thing goes off in the middle of the night, whether you want toast or not. You know, it, it, it's, it, that I find kind of ludicrous. But my answer to that is, and I kind of go back to that earlier story, that Bible, books, books I hear this about. And if you think about it, something that um, you're, particularly a Bible, uh, that someone has read perhaps over their whole life, maybe many times, 
there's a connection with reading, experiencing it, owning that Bible. That's very unlike, let's just say, you know, you have a, a favorite paperweight that you pick up every once in a while, look at it, and dust it off, and put it to the side. You know, somebody gave it to you. You have a sentimental attraction to it. Um, maybe somebody gave you something, and that person isn't with you anymore. I I think often these are like energies that are put out there by uh, perhaps people who you know are, are are no longer with us. I think some people have that kind of. Uh, influence on objects um uh but so i think it, there has to be some kind of a bonding um you, you know you always see it was the probably the most uh, classic thing is like the rocking chairs right there's always some of the rocker in the attic that suddenly uh, but in a way that kind of makes sense because that's something someone spent a lot of time sitting in <laughs> um i've heard of haunted beds you see a lot of videos of things with with that it's people spend time with 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 an object or a piece of furniture um th those things I, I i feel have more credibility than again you know it's that i've got so much trouble with that waffle iron you gave me you know um it's just it it it, it, it just seems logical to me that that's why it would it would would, would be these things that were um really a part of your life a real common one that that i hear on on the show are mirrors mirrors yeah um well look at even with uh, not that it happened there but looking at, 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 a, at a, a shiva you know, what do jewish people do they cover the mirrors um i always say it's you know so people like me can't go looking for the manufacturer's tag on it but um <laughs> uh yeah mirrors um i i've, I've heard a no number of stories about mirrors i've had customers make references to seeing things in mirrors i have not again i'm always just being honest about this um well i have had had ex a number of experiences or been connected to them but um not that i did have a, a pretty strange one with a, with a desk um but I'd, again i think it's that kind of the, the amount of time you're s someone spent with the object kind of made an impression on it and that i always view it as kind of like you know it's like an old 78 and it just keeps playing it over and over you know that's 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 there's some kind of cosmic or psychic impression that's made on the object and it just replays it you know like a video you know a very common thing that we talk about in in the ghost world is is this a conscious entity is this a residual entity is this is this neither is this some sort of conscious thing that was never walking the earth when it comes to antiques what would you say is is more common i'm gathering from some of your stories here that they seem to be and, and correct me if i'm wrong fairly residual not so much that that Aunt Edna is still connected to the crock pot and is going to pop out and give you cooking tips and watch over you and guide your hand to make the ultimate casserole, but more so you're going to maybe smell uh, her perfume or smell uh, the tuna casserole when you never made the tuna casserole because of the residual energy connected to said object. I, I, I think it's more of a residual thing. Um, uh, uh, it's especially when like an object is just kind of showing up <laughs> like pay attention to me or or you know people talk about like a book that keeps falling off the shelf well why is it that book it's always that book um it is it's so i don't yeah i i i, I think it's more uh as if it's been uh kind of energized i'll tell you a little side story and i, I think this this kind of speaks to it so i, I I have a friend who really doesn't particularly believe in this, and he's very sweet, former seminary student, rather a religious person, um, a, a, a social worker, really just a, a great guy. Everybody loves him. Um, now, if I take him to, like, say, an antique show, and he, and I've seen him do this countless times, and, it, and it, this, this comes from a certain purity of soul, that he can approach an item, something just kind of speaks to him, and he has to, like, touch this. Going, this is, oh, well, this is just, this is beautiful. I love this. This is wonderful. Um, not about money. Again, if I can emphasize anything, that's one theme I have in the book, is if we can, if you can get around the money thing, that money thing muddles people's thinking. It really, I know it's important, but put that aside. So he's not looking at something that's, like, for value. And he touches it. 
and he sets it down. And minutes later, somebody else will come along and pick it up and very often buy it. And again, I've seen him do it countless times. Now, I joke with him saying like, hey, come into my booth and start touching things, right? Doesn't work that way. Does it? And he'll even say, nah, you know, I wouldn't do that. And he goes, no, it's just something he's drawn to objects. I think it's that. I think, I think the living absolutely can do that. Almost he's kind of like an influencer, right? There's some energy there's some energy in the object, and it's it's like a magnetism between the living and something <laughs> that's still residing in in that in that object. I have seen him do this dozens of times. Other people have as well. And like he always says, he's, he wishes he could monetize it. But that's kind of the point that when it's not about it's not about the value of making money on something, you got to throw all that out the window. <laughs> this is a different subject. Humans mess that up with 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 with, with, with money. The, to, you know, I always say to the object, we mean nothing. Money means nothing. <laughs> but I know that, that sounds kind of goofy, but I always say, you know, <laughs> put yourself in, in 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 the shoes of a pair of shoes. Um, <laughs> put yourself in the shoes of of, of an object. Uh, they're the we're they're the permanent for the most part. We're the temporary. We, you know, we'll we'll be gone. This, this thing has had owners and owners and owners you know, over the years. Uh, it might be looking out for just the next place it's going to be residing. So, And again, I don't necessarily, like you're saying, that it's so much a ghost, per se, in, in that it's just some like residual energy that wants to just go on. Having done this for so long, can you personally, when, when an object comes your way, sense there's something attached to it before any event occurs around it that really shows you oh there is something attached to this is that something you can pick up on um I, I, in all honesty no I, I i i think i'm very empathic um I, I i'm a good listener and i pay attention to why i'm there um who's brought me there um what I should say, what I shouldn't say. <laughs> um, and I don't want to gloss over this because sometimes these are very emotional situations. I have been in places where somebody had died, you know, 24 hours earlier. And, but because of circumstances, you know, these things have to go. Uh, there's, you know, leases control people's lives more than anything else, unfortunately. Um, and finances and that. Um, so, no, I, 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 I really don't. I think, Again, I, th I think I'm um, perhaps sensitive, but I think I'm more sensitive to the, to, to, to the people. And I think that when um, these situations arise, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm supposed to be there. I, I often think I'm the guy who needed to be here. This is, this is who they needed today. And I'm good at that, being honest. <laughs> I'm good at that. That's a tough spot. I've, I've had a lot of loss in, in my life. Or others, others have as well, um, and uh, I, I'm I'm good I'm good at that. Um, and if that's the one thing I can do that makes it easier for people, um, and especially when going back that you know when money is involved, you know going like eh, um, uh, just to make it as, as as easy as possible. This should not they got enough problems, um, but but uh, I would say that it's only been after. Uh, we've we have the object and now it's you know in 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 the store um and there's been there's been a couple of those but i i can't say that like when i picked it up oh i knew you know that desk was going to be trouble uh, this was but was one of my one of the stories um but uh no no I had a desk um a guy actually had, just came in the store and says i've got this desk i need to sell um and it was a small partner's desk your listeners know what a partner's desk is. It's partners can sit on either side. There's all these little drawers on both sides. Generally, there's a center drawer that you can slide documents in the drawer to the other person, that main drawer, which is kind of cool. Um, uh, so it's a turn of the century partner's desk. Generally, I don't even deal in things like that old, but at that time I was doing arts and crafts and Victorian kind of fit. Now it's all mid-century modern and mad men. And somebody actually is annoyed with me that I don't have a, a story about a haunted Eames chair, which I think is funny, but but I don't, you know. Um, 
anyway, <laughs> they're making requests, which is just annoying. Um, so the desk, this guy says, I've got to, I, I really want to sell this desk. And I, I, it was cheap. It was, it might have been a hundred dollars. Um, but this guy really wants to unload this desk. Um, and what was crazy about it was, um, so on the bottom of every drawer were all these symbols. And it kind of looked like hieroglyphs or memes or it, like kind of an old English scrawl. And it was all um, burnt into the wood with beautiful handwriting. But it didn't make any sense at all. Um, and it's as if this, there was a whole story being told on the bottom of all these drawers. I don't know what that's about. That's just how it came in. So I kind of chalked it up as to like, well, this is kind of a, almost somebody did make a, an earlier like kind of folk art uh, impression on this thing, right? Um, and I sold the desk rather quickly and it came back. <laughs> uh, generally we don't take things back, but this person was very unhappy and it was just, I don't want it. This isn't working out. You need to take it back. And I was fairly new. It was my first store. And I, you know, I didn't want bids before Yelp. Um, didn't, need one, didn't, didn't need any bad reviews. I said, ah, sure, I'll take it back. It's a great desk. Somebody else will want it. But that happened over and over. I kept selling this desk and it kept coming back. And as it came back, and, and then I got into, well, what's up with this? Um, and then people would just say, very uncomfortable about you. Well, there's problems with it. You know? um, finally, um, <laughs> a, a woman bought it and um, she had, she, she, very sweet and she had said this was just like the desk very similar to the desk that her grandmother had had and so that's why she wanted it and she and, she and her sister used to play a, a, you know, a tea house in, in this thing and they put all their little made Japan, uh, occupied Japan uh, tea sets in the drawers You know, she, she had a purpose for it, her husband was less than thrilled that she was buying it, I remember that um and it goes. Um, eh, about a week later, she calls me. Like, what do I know about the desk? What am I going to tell her? Everybody who buys it returns it? You know, that's not, that's, that's not going to work. <laughs> and I said, I said, so let me guess. You want to bring it back. Just Let's just c cut to the chase. I'm busy, right? Um, and she goes, no, 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 no. She says, it's just that, she goes, you know, the drawers don't stay, don't stay closed. Um. And I said, well, you know, that could be the glides. She goes, no, no, no. You know, my, 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 my husband's looked at that. So um, I went and I asked this kind of funny that I didn't know this, but I didn't know this. So I had two guys who, who had, had been working for me all this time and I had seen the desk come and go. They, they'd been on, you know, bring it back downstairs, bring it back upstairs. Right. And on this, so this woman's talking about like, you know, she's having issues with the desk. So I said to the guys, did you notice anything with the desk when it was here? And they just look at one another. What, what's funny is these guys did not get along at all. <laughs> not friends. Um, and it, the, they say to me, well, you know, there is a thing about those kind of balls of light that come out of the, the drawers. What the? You, <laughs> what? Right? Now, again, this these would have been in the basement. In the basement, there's no windows. There's no natural light. You know, whatsoever. There's just fluorescence, right? And I go, what are you talking about? And they said, well, like the second or third time that desk came back, the drawer, we noticed the drawers were open and these little balls of light would kind of fly around the room. Oh, you didn't mention this? You know, and then they were like, well, first off, again, they didn't like one another. So it was, just, it was like that. They just agreed. They're not going to talk about this. Um, uh, well, that's then what she started to see. Um, and, uh, it, it freaked her out a little, but it was kind of cute because she, she kind of felt like that this had been, this had been the desk she'd been looking for for so long. That was just part of the experience. And she was, her husband again, wasn't as thrilled about it. They're keeping it. And she did, she even said, you know, what am I going to do? Call you and not bring something back? You know, what, what am I complaining about? There's a number of conversations we had, which was pretty funny. And, I, and then I and I did say, well, you know, I since realized that I guess we did have problems with this, but you know, I we sell a lot of stuff. I can't be on top of everything. Um, so I looked at this as more like really like kind of a business problem. Um, but that's on any number of people having experiences with the same item.
Have you ever been in a situation where you're able to essentially connect some dots and do a full 360 on, on an object, figuring out whose it was now, why the energy is there, or whose energy this may have been that's connected to it, and really kind of get, get a full spectrum story on, on what's, what's going on with the object? Um, no, I, 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 I really don't. And I certainly don't want people to think, like, because it's a book, there's like probably four or five chapters that delved into this. Um, and that really wasn't my intention. I was trying to tell some of the best stories of my 30 years of doing this that I thought people would be interested in. Um, um, no, it's, I, 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 I wish, I, I wish I did. I would say this last story was the one I think I'd had, not that we knew the origination of certainly the writing and what all that was about, but the fact that I still connected to the person, uh, who had purchased it and it went on. Um, uh, I think that's probably as, as, as complete as it was going to be toward, towards at least my end of of that story. Have you ever had an object that you've gotten in and, and you just felt so uncomfortable with it that you just did not want to sell it or, or that you just thought this is this is just not going to sell uh, because of, of what's going on with it or, or what I'm feeling off of it or others have felt off of it? Well, a- absolutely the desk. There- absolutely the desk uh because it was just a i mean <laughs> that thing went from 695 to 495 to 390 you know there was a sale on that desk i mean i made a little money but at that point it was uh that thing's got to go um uh, and the thing is too kind of, kind of squaring back to you know online sales and that that and talking to dealers most anybody this isn't about oh i can get more money for this this is this thing needs to leave i need to sell this and hopefully you know i I won't get a bad review or somewhere complained about it so um most people and i say maybe that's part part of it is fear but the other thing i think it's just basically business you know you don't want to you don't you don't want a bad review you want your customers to be you know happy and talk about selling somebody a lemon you know, this, this isn't this isn't like, a you know, some old, some old beat up car. Um, you you know, in, in way in you think about it, particularly with the desk, the husband was like, you know, have we brought something into the house now? You know, this this is like an infestation, you know, and and that's not how could that be good? You know, so I think it certain takes a certain person to like adopt that <laughs> that dog that nobody wants. You know, I think it's more that. Has there ever been a situation where you or or someone else has been with an object, uh, taken an object into their possession, and, and maybe even gotten rid of the object, but it seems that something connected to that object released itself from that and then attached itself onto you or, or another object, another thing uh, within, your, uh, within your circle of possessions? I think sometimes when... Um, if... if, if if items come from a situation of um, violence uh, or something extremely sad, uh, I know dealers have talked 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 about that. Um, it, it almost makes the, the pieces unsaleable for some reason. Um, that they just no matter how cool it is or how well priced it is or even how rare it is like what is it about that and it'll be like the one i can think of was there was a things that came from a a a, a home where there had been a a suicide um and uh in the closet um and there were you know clothes clothes in the closet and some really great vintage clothes uh and uh, that it, 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 none, 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 none of it would sell. Um, I know a lot of vintage clothing dealers. Um, so again, I think there can be this residual. Let's call it, I don't want to call it bad. I would just call it like a kind of a negative energy somehow connected to, 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 this, to the situation. Um, you know, and, and, and I think there's also a flip on that. I think when there's some, when, you know, people, people, people just pass naturally and they were happy and it was just their time and all that. And they were, people just uh 
would tell you how wonderful that person was, um, their items fly out the door. <laughs> uh, not literally, um, <laughs> but uh, it's, I get a kick out of it because I know where these things came from. And I know, sometimes I actually knew the person who had passed, and um, which is why they con- the family would contact me to begin with. And it's like that goodness just continues. Um, and, you, and you're selling it to somebody who's so cool, and they're going like, this is great. This item is going on. So I know you might want to be, you know, there's, there, there's the dark and the light, but there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of light out there. And I, and I, I, I really kind of, I try to, in this, in this business, I kind of embrace that because, again, because of all these endings and how sad things can be. Let's say you have an object that's in your store. Uh, or that someone saw online that they want, and you know that there is something attached to this object, good, bad, what have you, it's just something. There's something going on there beyond just the candlestick that it is or whatever it, it, it may be. Do you share that information with the potential buyer, or is it just kind of like, well, maybe they'll find it, maybe they won't? Because uh, there's many times I think people never pick up on these things because maybe they don't have the sensitivity level to do so. And maybe whatever is there is not strong enough to reveal itself to every single person if they're not on that, that sensitivity spectrum. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, well, and again, I think that goes back to the, you know, the, the eBay and the haunted dolls and all that stuff. You know, they're using that as a sales tactic and a tool um and you know it should therefore be worth 50 percent more because you know it it crawls under your bed at night um you know as i said or said any number of people you know there's yeah i'm not guaranteeing it's haunted you know it kind of goes the flip of it then they kind of expect it you know uh um uh, uh, to be um i do hear in the store before when you were asking about physical brick and mortar antique stores you know i've got a you know a couple of strange things uh, occur to me, but I've heard more from customers um, who, uh, and this is, we have a 1939 building. It's a, it used to be an old furniture store on two levels. It's like 20,000 square feet. Um, and the upstairs are all these furniture showrooms. And it, this isn't some like dusty old antique store. It's a very modern kind of department store. People go online and check it out um, see, and see what it looks like. So it's, it, it's, it, you know, in some ways, you think that would be like the least likely place uh, to have these incidences. Uh, people tell me, uh, especially girls, say that someone's watching them, someone's following them. They thought they saw someone in a mirror. Um, I've had a lot of that, a lot of that. Um, and I've had employees that said for the been with me for years nothing has happened nothing's happened nothing's happened and then something happens <laughs> and they'll go last night when i was closing which is generally when something happens um uh but it kind of makes sense when you i mean because this is a really big place and the volume of merchandise we have coming in every day um and a, a lot and again a lot of furniture and i think furniture can be very residual so and i i've not i can't say you know, oh i've heard about you know a a haunted necklace or a haunted ring or something. No, it's, that's, that's not, I've not heard any, you know, any, any, anything like that, but, but it, it, the, the number of people who ask if other people have seen anything or heard anything upstairs. Uh, so there's that feedback, you know, that I get. And the same thing I say, well, I can't, I'll, I relating it to them as I'm relating it to you. Other people have said that too. I don't know. Kind of on that that same note, have you ever had an object or are there any items that you get in and you say, you know what, Uh, I'm not going to sell this. Uh, If I had not known the story behind it, I would probably sell it. But now I know what the story is. I have never experienced anything with it, but uh, there's a good chance that there could be something not so good uh, attached to it that you say, I'm just not going to put this out there. Does that ever happen? Well, yeah, I'm going to answer it this way. In that, <laughs> here's where I'm going to knock the living. <laughs> that, that, you know, not 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 everybody's sweet and wonderful. Let's be honest. Um, that you know, uh, there's been any number of occasions where there's someone who's purchased something and they were just very difficult, very very difficult, um, and they you know, and they ended up buying it, 
anyway, and they got what they wanted. And you're like, oh, glad that's over with. And then they bring it back. Invariably, uh, and uh, many dealers will say this as well. And again, talk about this negative energy. Um, uh, you can't sell that piece. It's done. It's over. It's almost as if because there was this big argument about whatever, and it's not necessarily even price. It could be, you know, why isn't this in better condition? Well, it's, it is. This is the condition it's in. We're sold as is, as found, right? You knew that when you bought it, you know, whatever. There's such a negativity that people can, I think, I mean, what we're talking about earlier, can impress on something, just as there could be like a positive life force. I think there's absolutely a, this negative thing. I, I end up donating. I just donate this stuff. Um, and that's happened on any number of objects. It just, there's just some, talk about karma. <laughs> so, now, you know, that's more of a retail story than a ghost story, but it's, but it's an honest one. It makes me wonder if, if sometimes the item gets back out there eventually, somehow someone takes it in. Does the energy that was on it that was not allowing it to sell it and just not making it go anywhere, is that expunged? And then the new energy of someone who loved it, uh, does that replace it and then suddenly make it a sellable object again? I kind of always think of these things as, as very much being sponge-like. Yeah. You know, and, and we are sponge-like. Mm-hmm. You know, you, if you're with... If you're with people and, you're, and you know you go out and they're happy people and you're having a good time, you're having a good time. You go out with a couple, you know, Debbie Downers, mm-hmm. and you're ready to go home and you know shoot yourself. Sure. So it, it's just you know it just it. And I think I think objects in their own way they absorb that. Um, but in that same way, can they bounce back? I think they can. I think if uh, um, they're they're uh, purchased and 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 loved. My, my my theme is you know we 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 all, we are we are all our things. You know, we are defined by what by what we collect, um, and putting that out there. I think I think these, I think items can be rehabilitated. <laughs> I think that's your point. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good point. I think that's I think that's pretty spot on. One more question I want to ask because we hear about this, and this is something I would never do, but I know there are some people out there who who do have this uh, interest in acquiring ha- haunted objects. It's it, it, like any sort of collection. It, it's something some people want. And if someone is out there who wants to get a haunted object, obviously you can never quite guarantee such a thing. But if you wanted to increase their odds, if they wanted to increase their odds of picking something out at an antique store, what item would you tell them to try and get that would maybe have a higher percentage chance of having something attached to it um i only again because I've, I've i've seen this and heard this through through many others books seem to have that um uh and i i would tell people this it'd be on one hand you could say you know okay you know, <laughs> was it uh you know an educated consumer is your, your best customer you know like you're like know your furrier i think that was the expression um <laughs> but so you know you're trying to buy from a reputable dealer if you're really looking for something like that but boy i think you're going to probably kiss a lot of toads along the way i would do this and this is just me i'm a bit of a book person anyway but but you know first off i mean antique stores yeah absolutely but you know thrifting uh Thrifting is probably good in that because, and I, I would say estate sales, but it gets a little tricky there because it's very competitive and you really can't do it. Um, try to be, go out <laughs> and um, just try to be as open and receptive as possible. Like open up your palms, have your palms open. <laughs> Don't have any clenched fists. Be receptive and just look and just feel and try to relax and let, let the object find you. I think that works more often than the other way around. Um, something will speak to you. That expression, you know, the, the, it just, it spoke to me, it talked to me. Well, it didn't literally, but they do. <laughs> and I think if nothing else, you can kind of find a, uh, a different part of yourself that we all have. We, we absolutely all have, all have this. But again, being a little more intuitive, being a little more empathic, uh, being kinder, you could all use that these last couple months um, and open yourself up to these things. I, I, I think in a situation, especially quiet, that's why I think a thrift store might be a good place to do it or in a quiet antique store. 
uh, estate sales get very competitive about finding things. It's hard to relax. There's all this energy of like somebody else is going to come along and grab the item while you're standing there, you know. So if you can get into that, I would say if you really want to try to find something, let the item find you. You can find out more about Dwayne Scott Kearney's book and what he does on his website, sellingdeadpeoplesthings.com. The link is also on our website at thegravetalks.com. That's going to wrap up today's episode of The Grave Talks. If you like our show, let your friends know that we exist. Please give us some positive reviews on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to our show and share it on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, whatever it may be. Letting other folks know about our program helps us tremendously and helps us create a better show for you. So please do share and let other folks know about us. Until next time for The Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thank you for listening.